Permutations and combinations, what are they and how can we most easily calculate them? For starters, a combination is a group. So it's gonna be a group of objects. A permutation is also a group, but if we switch the order, the group changes. So with the permutation, order matters. Let's say that you've got an apple, a banana, and a carrot. I'm going to abbreviate these A, B, and C. If I was looking for a combination, there's only one group. It doesn't matter what the order is, there's a single combination. If instead I were to look at permutations of these, I could have the apple, the banana, and the carrot, or I could do the apple first, the carrot second, and the banana third. This is a different ordered group, so this one counts as a different permutation. Or I could start with the banana, followed by an apple, followed by the carrot, or the banana, followed by the carrot, followed by the apple. Finally, I could start with that carrot. So I could do a carrot, followed by an apple, followed by a banana, or the carrot, followed by the banana, followed by the apple. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different permutations, but just one combination. If I were to express these using some mathematics, I could take my permutations and say that these are three items, pick three items. I could also write this as P three comma three. As a combination, this would be 3C3, or 3 choose 3. We could also write this as C parenthesis 3 comma 3. Now I can put either of these easily into my TI-84 to come up with these values. Let's do the permutation first. I'm going to go to my math menu, and I'm going to arrow over to probability. You'll notice that there's my permutation and combination listed. We're gonna do the permutation first. I'm gonna hit enter, and it wants to know what the first number is. So I've got three items, and I am arranging three of those items in my group. I hit enter, and there's my number six. Let's do the very same thing for the combination. For the combination, I again go to my math menu. I'm gonna arrow over to probability. I'm gonna grab the combination, and this time, Order does not matter, so I'm gonna do three, choose three items, and I end up with just one combination. If your calculator happened to look different than mine when you hit the NPR button, it may have just typed in NPR like this without those little boxes. If that's you, you wanna start by typing in this number. So you're gonna type the three first, then go to that math menu, grab the N, P, R, then you're gonna type in that second number and you'll come up with the same answer that we did. Let's take a look at some examples and compute these using the calculator. In example one, we're choosing four appetizers from eight different options. And in example two, we're ranking four appetizers from eight different options. In the first one, order doesn't matter. You're sitting at a table with your friends at a restaurant. You guys wanna order four of these. It doesn't matter how they show up. So order doesn't matter, and we're gonna be doing a combination. So N, C, R. If you were using the formula, it would look like this. So it would be N factorial divided by N minus R factorial times R factorial. For our example, n is equal to the total number of options, which is eight, and r is the number that we're choosing, which is equal to four. So if I were to do this using the formula, I would get eight factorial divided by eight minus four factorial times four factorial. I'm gonna do my denominator first. Eight minus four is four factorial, four factorial, 8 factorial. If you're simplifying this one by hand, that factorial means that you're multiplying 8 counting down. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. I am just going to count down to the higher number that I've got in my denominator. So I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to write this as 8 times 7 times 6 
times 5 times 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial, 4 factorial. I can cancel my 4 factorials and I can start to simplify what I've got. Continuing to simplify, I have 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 now. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I can cancel 8 with a 4 times a 2. I can also cancel a 3 into a 6 and I get 2. I've got nothing left in that denominator and I have 7 times 2 times 5 left. 7 times 2 times 5 is equal to 70. Now that's the long way. Let's check and see what our calculator gives us. I want to go into my math menu and then over to probability. I'm going to choose the combination, hit enter. Um, N comes first. There were eight to choose from and I am choosing four of them all together. And thank goodness I got that 70. Calculator is so, so much easier. Let's look at that next example. In example number two, I'm going to be ranking my top four appetizers out of the eight. So order definitely matters because I can switch my top favorite appetizers. So I'm going to be using a permutation for this one. It would be N P R. The formula for the permutation is N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. N for this one is still equal to eight and R, what we're choosing, is still equal to four. If I put my numbers into the formula and do it this way, I'm gonna get eight factorial divided by eight minus four factorial, which is eight factorial divided by four factorial. I'm gonna expand that numerator just so I get down to a four factorial. So I count down eight times seven times six times five times. I'm gonna stop at four factorial because I wanna cancel it with the four factorial in the denominator. I end up with eight times seven times six times five. Putting that into my calculator, I end up with 1680. Let's go back to the calculator and put in instead eight, P4. Math menu over to probability. I'm going to arrow down and choose NPR. Hit enter. Um, N is equal to 8 and R is equal to 4. I hit enter and that's a lot of different choices. 1680. I've got two more examples. See if you can decide which one's a combination and which one is a permutation. So for these two, take a minute and try and determine which one's a permutation and which one is a combination. If you wanna get ahead of me even further, go ahead and put this into your calculator. Let's see if your answer will match mine. For number three, we are picking a president, a vice president, and a secretary from a committee of five people. I'm assigning positions this time. When I'm assigning positions, that's another sign that I want to be using a permutation. Order matters. I can pick the same three people, but I can rename their positions by reordering them. So this one's going to be a permutation. Um, so it's going to be N, P, R. N is equal to 5, so N is equal to 5, the number that I'm choosing from, and R, 1, 2, 3 different positions, so R is equal to 3. So this would be 5, P, 3. I'm not going to bother with the formula, let's just put this right into the calculator. Math and then probability, choose that permutation and then enter. I've got five on my committee. I'm going to choose three to be one of my officers. I hit enter and I've got 60 different ways to make that happen. So if you were correct and number three was a permutation, chances are good that number four is going to be our combination. In number four, we're picking a five-person committee from a group of 10 people. I don't care what their positions are. I don't care where they sit. Order does not matter. So this one's going to be a combination. So N, C, R. 
n is equal to 10 and r is equal to 5. Again, let's put this right into our calculator. Math menu, over to probability, arrow down to the combination, hit enter. I'm gonna put 10 in first, that's the number that I'm choosing from, and I'm gonna choose five to be on that committee, and I end up with 252. You guys are doing great. If you're working on probabilities, take a look at this next video. Thank you so much for watching.